So I've been asked to look at this interesting lamp. So this is actually an active lamp and it's got some LEDs on it. So it's got one there, one side facing one there, another service mount there and another side facing there. So it's got four LEDs to create a 360 degree pattern. This side of the board's only got a single resistor here, 82 ohms. You can see the layout on the board there. It's a wormer. It's on the other side. So we've got a TVS or something just here, by the looks of it. That's a diode bridge. We've got three more 82 ohm resistors here, MELFs. Then we've got another 82 here and another 82 there. And you can see the layouts on the board there. I'll get it on the right. Okay. I haven't come across one of these before. I've been asked to have a look at it, see what's wrong with it because it's playing up. So I did some measurements on it, I'll demonstrate. So cross LEDs. I'll try and get it so you can see what I'm doing, is it? So that's where we're at. LED there, lights up, 2.5 volts drop. Because the LED here, which might be the other way around, I think it is. It lights up, 2.6 volts. Flip it over. And this one here. Lights up, 2.55. Well, basically the same as the other one. And this one here. Doesn't register. It does light up, but it is not registering. There you go, 2.9. So this one's very different. So that's interesting for a start. I already checked all the resistors, all resistors are good. The interesting thing about this is because it's got a bridge on it, which means it's polarity independent. So you can put it either way around, doesn't matter. Which is why it's got a diode bridge on it. So it doesn't matter which way around you clip these on, it converts it. Because these will go past the TVS through that bridge. And that bridge, because it's a diode bridge, means you can put these either way around because you can go AC. Right? You can put AC into a bridge and get DC out. Same thing with this, it doesn't matter which way around you put them. This changes the biasing on the actual diodes inside the bridge. So it doesn't matter. Now let's turn this on. And I've got this set to 10 volts right now, nothing really happening. Turn it up. This is supposed to be a 24 volt system. Right, so there's 13 volts there, and you can see the diodes there. They're all lit up. Right. Now I was actually testing this before and it seemed to be working okay, I think that's a bit weird. And I left it on for a while and it started to play up. See that flickering there? That's 16 volts. Oh, there we go. Flickering. Doesn't matter which way around I put these clip leads. It's not the bridge. I've eliminated the diodes. I checked the voltage drop across the diodes, which I'll demonstrate you as well. So it's the voltage drop across resistors and diodes. So across the MELF resistors. There you go. 230 millivolts. Same and same. Don't forget, right now it's not playing up. And this one here, little service mount, the same. This one here, the same. This one on the back. I want to try this, what plays up. The same. So, the voltage drop across all the resistors is exactly the same. There's no like one resistor standing out more than the others. And that's fine. Then we've got the bridge. We'll just check the voltage across the bridge here. No, it's not a great shot, is it? It's not barely, it's only barely a shot. So it will stick it across the bridge. The output of the bridge, 14 volts. I'm injecting 16.3, so a bit of loss through there, and it flickered a little bit just then. So I think we're going to have some issues with it. Let's go a bit more. There we go. 17 volts, and that's now dropping out. Okay. It's breaking down. So this is supposed to run off 24 volts. So I'll shove this up to 23 volts, 23.3 I've got going in. And that's measure across all the diodes to find out which diode, or which LED, is causing the problem. So let's get these ones first because we've got four of them this side, or three of them this side. So this one here, 2.5 volts across it. No difference, that's fine, it's still 2.5 volts. This one here, 2.4 volts. 100 millivolts less, but it's still alright. This one here, 2.4 volts again. Then this one here, 14 volts. Yeah, that 14 volts is because of a lack of current. So we're only drawing 1 milliamp right now off the power supply. So this LED here 
has got a big voltage across it because it's not actually working. It's basically going open circuit. So I bring this voltage back down again, so it comes back on. Measure across that diode again. There we go, getting four volts right now. And flickering around and stuff. Go down some more. Go back to the it's 14 volts, we get 3.3 volts across it. 13 volts, 12 volts, 3 volts across there. 16 volts. Alright, there you go. Now it's cutting out. So yeah, this diode here, the LED right there, is opening up and killing the rest of the circuitry. So I need to see if I've got a LED I can put on to replace that. I'm not sure I do, but I'll have a look anyway. Well the closest I've got here I think is 2835s. They're similar sort of size. I've got some white ones here. So I might just have a look and see if one of these looks about right. I'll try probing and see if I can get anything out of it. I'm not sure if this is going to be right or not. Let's just get one out of the packet and have a look. Okay, yeah, pads are towards the end. I can probably get that on there. Let's see if it's going to physically fit. Physically it's about the right size. So yeah, it's just a much lower profile, so I think it's not designed for the same ratings, but it's what I've got. So we've got to try and get that one off there and put this one on. So let's actually measure this, find out which around it's got to go for a start. 2.5 volts, look at that. And I think that lit up then too, I didn't quite see. So the larger pad on the bottom is the negative side, or the anode. Alright, let's try and get some fresh solder on this. This is some leaded solder. It might be hard to heat up. Oh, there you go. Straight off. That's easy. Excellent. So let's clean this off. Sweet. That's easy. Much easier than I thought it was going to be. It's going to solder one side, then I'll solder the other side. Hopefully the camera focus on the bit I want you want to focus on. Can we focus here? Here? This bit. There you go. Now it's gonna be a bit awkward for me to try and solder it at all. Now bit messy. Solder the other side. these back up and see what happens when I power it. Well it's lighting up that's drawing 10 milliamps that's at 20 volts now let's see what voltage we're getting across that LED. Come on it's there somewhere. As long as I can't see what I'm doing. I'm getting blinded by, <laughs> by the light on the LED. There you go 2.7 that's what we're getting across that one now and across this one, 2.7 as well, great. So let's wind this up, 24 volts. Let's go 27 volts. That's quite harsh, but I want to see if it can withstand it. 2.8 volts across there. Getting blinded by the thing, but that's working okay. Check this one. 2.7 again, well 2.8. So 30 milliamps at that voltage. Cool. So it's going to sit there at 24 volts. And exactly 24 volts. I'm going to leave that running for a while and see if it plays up at all. Bit of burning testing. But that's like it's going to work. It's good enough. So let's draw the circuit out. Something we know. We've got about 10 volts across the LEDs in total because they've got four LEDs and we're drawing 24 milliamps across the whole circuit. Th think about that later on. So let's start off with the input connections. We've got two connections. I'm doing blue here because it could be either polarity. It depends on how you plug the thing in. I change the red and black once you go to a polarized state. So initially we've got coming in, I'm going to say this side here has got those initial resistors on there. Got three resistors, those MELF resistors, not MILF resistors, MELF resistors. You did get that correct. And these are all 82 ohms. That then comes through. But here, at this junction, we have a TVS diode. Now 
Now a TVS diode is a bit like a Zener diode in that it will clamp to a certain voltage only they're much more aggressive it's like an avalanche effect so it will just suddenly clamp when it reaches that voltage that's set for it will react much more quickly and it will basically become a short circuit so it's much more aggressive and this is a in this case it's a bi-directional TVS diode which is why it's drawn this way although badly because I'm not good at drawing <laughs> and basically it means it will work in either polarity it doesn't matter if this is the positive side or if this is the positive side this does not care. So then we have some more circuitry coming from this. It's still polarity independent at this point. And we're going across to a full bridge rectifier. And we're going to bring this up here like this. Put a junction there. Bring this one down here, junction there. Now let's draw these diodes out. And I'll draw this as independent diodes just for explanation's fate. X explanation's sake. Okay, to make it easier to understand, hopefully. Should have done this differently there, like that. Okay. This is where we start to get to the point where it's going to have polarity. And I'll explain that in a second. So here, so here and here, it could be AC or polarity independent, right? It could be AC, DC, polarity doesn't matter. In this case, it's DC input, and polarity doesn't matter. So this is then becomes the positive side. I'm going to bring the positive side out like this, and bring it up. I'm going to make this the positive rail coming across like this, okay? And at this point here is the negative rail. Bring that down like this. So at this point it becomes polarised. Before that it doesn't matter. So you can have positive coming in this way, it will go through this diode in that direction, becomes positive, negative comes in this way, can't go through that way because it's being blocked because it goes through that direction in a diode in negative aspect. So if you've got a zero volt or negative power supply, it will go in that direction, and a positive will go that way, right? So negative goes through that way. So this diode's doing nothing, this diode's doing nothing, it's using these two diodes here. Now if it has swapped over, so that was negative, this was positive, positive would come in here, be blocked by that, it has to come this way, back to here. If that's the negative coming in, you blocked by that, it has to come this way. In which case it's using these two diodes instead, not those two. Right, so it's only using two of the four diodes in the DC mode but it means it's independent of polarity. So what we now have is positive side coming in. That goes to a LED, like so. All right, LED, first LED in the chain. Then we have a resistor, and then strangely, you actually have another resistor straight after it. We could have simplified the circuitry in some aspects. What I could have laid out differently, but I think this is like a universal board. It allows slightly different configurations depending on what's populated. Because if you look at the back of the board, it's got some unpopulated pads. And you look at that circuitry, it could be done a different way. So that explains why you've got those two resistors like that. Then we have another LED. It comes down. That goes to another LED straight away. That then comes to another resistor, which then comes to another LED, the final LED. We have a long bit there. Okay. And then that completes that circuit. One, two, three resistors. Yep, I missed anything. That's good. All right, so it goes like that. Okay, so you've got the positive coming through becomes negative there, right? Although you could argue that that's not fully positive because you know at that point there it's kind of mid-circuit or that maybe there's mid-circuit is there so that's like half voltage there. Now don't forget we're getting 10 volts across the LEDs in total because we're getting about 2.5, about 2.5, 2.6 volts 
in total across all four LEDs. So I multiply that by four, you get about 10 volts or so, right? Um, and we had 24 milliamps. And we were seeing, I think I saw 3.3 volts across these resistors here when I was checking those, but depending on what power supply voltage you had running at the time. So we're going to be getting equal voltage drop across these and across these because we're using 24 milliamps across that entire circuit. All of these three resistors had the same voltage drop across them because they've all got the same current going through them all. Okay, we got that. Hopefully you understand. Nice and simple, basic circuit. But this is the clever bit here, is the fact you've got a diode bridge in here means you can do any polarity, doesn't matter, LEDs will still work. Well, it's been running now for probably 20 minutes, no issues, current and voltage is still stable, still 24 milliamps, hasn't changed, it seems to be running just fine now. Boards marginally warm, no issues, that looks like it's fixed, happy with that. Nice easy fix. Nice little quick one, thought I'd just share it, because it's a bit of trouble shooting on something like this. Because apparently the supplier quoted a ridiculous price for this particular part. I don't know exactly what the price was, I'm going to find out what it was, but apparently it was ridiculous enough that they said, can you try and fix this? That's how ridiculous it was. So, yeah, anyway, it's fixed. I'll get back to them tomorrow.